Okay, great. Um, wow. Um, okay, so we're gonna start using screenshots from the different um, conference, video conference platforms. Um, so um, bear with us if there's kind of a discontinuity between things um, and ask questions if you don't know how we got somewhere, something like that. Um, so as we continue to move our work online, video conferencing platforms are getting more and more popular. Um, I definitely have used Zoom more often the last two weeks than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> um, and these video platforms are really useful tools, um, but you can only really use them if you know how to use them. Um, this is my first time hosting a Zoom webinar, so I'm learning right along with everyone else. Um, and the differences between the platforms that we use, like Free Conference Call, Google Hangouts, or Zoom, um, among others, can get really muddled. Um, but MCAN has kind of sorted through what specific ways we can use these platforms and how they are effective and useful in different ways. Um, so a few things to note, I think everybody is muted by um, the host, um, but make sure that you are muted. Um, yeah, and then if you can type in the chat function, which is gonna be at the top um, of your screen, if you wanna type in questions as you have them as they arise and we will address them at the end. Um, and we'll, we'll have more time for questions um, at the end too. So if you questions come up at the end, you can always ask them. Um, okay, so today we're gonna talk about, let's see, we're gonna talk about um, Zoom, free conference call and Google Hangouts, as I said. Um, so those are our main things. And I'm gonna start with our stock slides um, as it never hurts as a, um, as a refresher. So MCAN represents 59 chapters that represent 109 towns and we were founded in 2000. Um, we exist because two people from different towns in Massachusetts started sharing their tools for local organizing um, with each other. And we're able to give chapters a voice at the state level and we're able to share um, best practices with each other and other organizations in our network. So those are the main things that we are able to do. Um, local action, oh right, climate change. Climate change is happening in Massachusetts as all of you know. Um, this is not something far in the future, um, but the effects of climate change are really happening now. Um, and so that's something we need to address. And local action has always been the leader on climate change, um, starting at local small projects as well as education. And then as those shift up into state and national policy, um, it really still starts at that local level. And we focus on the local level because all of the best ideas also happen there. And local action, let's see. So we have the tools already to make a better world. Um, we just need to work and start at the systemic level change. Um, more, more now than ever, just changing specific parts of our lives to be greener um, will not make the system of climate change and the oppressive nature of climate change go away. Um, we need to look at the root of the issues and change the system to work for everyone, not just those at the top, which seems like a very Elizabeth Warren thing to say. Um, <laughs> Um, and then this next slide, hmm, there we go. Yeah, this next slide is I am well if you are well. It is um, something from Neighbor to Neighbor. Um, and this is also a slide from Mass Power Forward, but we really like it at MCAN because it stresses how community is vital to the health of ourselves and those around us. During a crisis, especially a crisis like the one we are in right now, um, the only way to help ourselves and others around us is to distance ourselves from them. Um, and that's it's kind of hard, but it has to be a joint effort. Like everyone has to um, stay away from each other right now. Um, and collective action is the only way to um, make any change. Um, and the same is for climate change. We cannot do it alone. And one person's action um, can be great, but has little effect on the overall response to the climate crisis. Um, and today we're going to talk about how to build that collective action, even if we are not in the same space. 
Um, yeah, there we go. So we can organize to be the big fish. All right. So I'm going to talk about Zoom and we're all on it. So it all looks like you have kind of figured out the super basics of it. Um, so Zoom is really the best application for really interactive meetings that are um, um, like kind of a little bit bigger. Um, and there's a Mac or PC, it's also an app on your phone. So you can join in these um, meetings kind of on any device that you own. Um, with Zoom, you're able to host meetings of up to 100 people. You're also able to have breakout rooms, which is really cool. Um, we've been doing this on the Mass Power Forward calls where you can break out into little groups and talk to each other and then bring it back to the full group. Um, so it's kind of great for um, collaborating. Um, it's also good for short meetings if you don't have any, if you don't want to spend the money to um, upgrade to $15 a month. Um, all of meeting, all of the meetings have to be 40 minutes or shorter. Um, a good trick is that you can just restart a meeting and everyone can join back in after 40 minutes. So if something is longer than 40 minutes, it's okay. Um, but just know that there will be like a cutoff at 40 minutes and then there are some scrambling and then you can come back to the meeting. Um, but the pros of Zoom are it's really straightforward. There's a lot of little extra abilities and add-ons. Um, if you've heard a lot of people are getting the background of Hogwarts and putting it in their Zoom background. So that's kind of like a fun thing you can do on Zoom. Um, but the cons, it can be expensive. $15 a month um, really adds up pretty quickly. Um, and it's not for big, big meetings. Even if you pay that $15 a month, there is still a cap of 100 people. Um, but for most uses, um, it's free. If you have a group of 10 people and you want to have a little meeting, Zoom is a great way to do it. Um, it's super interactive and pretty straightforward. Um, so I think you've all done this, but I'll go through um, how to create a Zoom account um, really quickly. So you can go on Zoom. This is kind of the home page. Um, you can create an account and then on the upper right hand corner, you would click my account. Um, and then um, once you wanna host a meeting, you'd host a meeting and you would, this comes up and you would download and then run Zoom and then you're on the application. Um, so this is the application of Zoom. Um, from here, you can join a meeting, you can create a new meeting, you can schedule a meeting. Um, and right now I'm sharing a screen. And to share a screen, you go to the bottom of your um, screen and then there's a green little share icon and you're able to share a screen. So you can do slideshows, but you can also have um, meetings like this one or I guess I'm sharing a slideshow. Um, so if you wanna schedule a meeting, so if you have a biweekly or um, monthly chapter meeting, you can click schedule um, and then it will take you to this. Um, you can type in the topic or the date when you're scheduling it for. Um, and if you want it to be a video call or just a phone call, that kind of thing. Um, and then once you press schedule down here on the bottom right. It'll take you to a Google calendar event and you can um, add guests or copy and paste what is in the um, description and email it to the people you want to join on the meeting. Um, everything should be um, right there. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and you can invite people several ways. Um, so this is you're probably all on this, you kind of know. <laughs> um, but this center green button is how I share my screen. Um, you can press record. Um, you all are adding in the chat, so you can add there. Um, you can also press manage participants. And so here um, I've clicked manage participants and you can mute everyone if you need to start off with quiet or there's some feedback in the background. Um, and there's um, there's other ways to kind of control um, what's going on in the meeting. 
Um, yeah, I think that's it. On to Rebecca. I'll take over this one. Oh, just kidding. It's true. Thank you, Mish. Yeah. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you everyone for, for joining us here today. Uh, thank you, Brad, for getting us set up on Zoom and also our board members, Ted and Mary, for joining us. And I apologize if I'm uh, forgetting any, any other board members who are on the call here with us. I uh, do want to remind everyone, if you have questions during any of the presentations today, please take advantage of the chat feature that you can find at the bottom of your screen and just put them in there and we'll, uh, we're going to work on getting through all of those at the end. Uh, but for right now, one of the things I'm going to, what I'm going to be chatting with everyone about is freeconferencecall.com. Uh, and this is actually the platform that MCAN uses for most of our uh, webinar features on a, on a regular basis under normal times. Uh, so freeconferencecall.com is just another video conferencing platform that is available and you can tell by the name of it, it is free to use, uh, but there are paid versions as well. Anything from the free version up to about $15 per month. Uh, so it, it is pretty good for both uh, video conferencing purposes on a small team or on a wide scale basis, uh, like what we use it for our webinars that we can also record off of. So that is one of the pros is that you can do video and audio recordings just like you can out of Zoom. There's a free version uh, that's available, as I mentioned, and there's also apps that you can download and run it from your tablet, your PC, MacBook, or iPhone, or I'm assuming uh, Android phone as well. One of the downsides that we found to freeconferencecall.com is it can be a little bit clunky if you're trying to do a presentation to a group of people to switch between users, which is why uh, if you've ever been on, on any of our webinars, uh, we typically have one person running the webinar and then we'll invite our other guests to speak and they'll say next so that someone else can advance the slides for them because it does just get uh, difficult to, to, to switch that uh, administrative feature uh, amongst each other. And that may just be because of the free, free version that we use. Uh, I don't know about the, the paid versions because obviously we haven't, we haven't done that, but that's one of the cons, one of the downsides that, that, that we've noticed from that. Uh, so the next couple slides here are going to be some screenshots of, uh, there we go. So this is the, the sign-in platform that you can see when we sign into our version of it. Uh, one, of the, one of the good options of it is you can just call into it and get the audio, uh, or you can do the video platform uh, feature of this as well. We encourage, uh, actually I encourage everyone to do audio and video through their computer rather than calling in. Sometimes we'll get people that will uh, pull up the audio on their computer and then also call in, so they're kind of getting this echo throughout themselves and they'll be questioning what, why is there an echo? Oftentimes that's the reason why but it is nice to have that call-in feature. So uh, I, I think we've had people that have been on the road away from the computer that have called in to present. Uh, so that's a nice feature to have. Uh, but this right here, uh, Mish, can you go back? Yep, thank you. This right here is where all the information that you're gonna have to share with people from the call-in for information to the uh, link to share with people to, to log into the meeting. Both the numbers and that link will stay the same for, for everything. So once you have that, you can copy it, save it, share it with folks, and they're going to be good to go on that one. All right, Mish, we can go to the next one now. Thank you. This right here is the probably the easiest way I've found to get into the to get into the freeconferencecall.com. And this is through the desktop app that the uh, the service offers. And this is I'm, I'm this would be similar to what it would look like if you download it to your phone and to your tablet but this is by far the easiest way to get into it, uh, especially if you're hosting the webinar. You open up the app, you hit the host button, and then we go to the next screen, you're gonna see what it looks like. That's me right there. So this is what it looks like once you're inside. I had a little bit of trouble uh, doing the screenshot, uh, but along the bottom of there, so underneath that, uh, that good looking picture of me, you're gonna see there are the, are the options. So starting from the left, your mute button. So uh, encouraging people, and I think this is the best practice for everyone, is that if you're presenting, just ask everyone to hit the mute button um, so that you're not picking up any uh, environmental noise. Um, like we were talking before, dogs barking, children yelling, neighbors throwing rocks and boards at each other, whatever it may be, ambulances going by, sirens, what, what, whatever the cause is. You can also, go through and mute other people. Uh, sometimes when we do that, anyone who's 
on our team that's hosted a webinar will find that we'll mute people so it's just our speakers uh, talking. And sometimes people go back and unmute themselves because they want that freedom. So we have to keep going back and, and muting them. So it's just something that, that, uh, that you have that ability to do. Uh, and then continue along the bottom there. Again, share uh, back, there we go. Hold on, I'm, I'm almost done here. Uh, be, be able to do the audio, sharing your video to be able to turn that on and off. And then the invite button, if there's someone that you wanna get onto the platform that you're waiting for that hasn't been able to get on there, you can do that. You can share your screen just like you, you can on Zoom. You can record the webinar, and then at the end of it, you can download that webinar, uh, and you can all download just the audio, or you can download the uh, video and audio together as one file. You can see how many people are on there, the chat features on there, and then there are some, uh, some preferences as far as uh, video and audio go. But for the most part, it is pretty straightforward. Um, simple, simple to use, but like I said, one of the downsides is if you're trying to share different people's screens, it can get a little bit clunky, so you need a little bit of patience and practice with that. Uh, so that ends for freeconferencecall.com, and I'm going to pass the baton over to Rebecca to take on the next section. Awesome. Thank you, Drew. Um, again, thanks to everyone for making time to join us. I hope everyone is staying safe and well. And if you do have questions throughout my presentation, or if you had questions that you didn't get the chance to ask um, during Drew or Misha's presentations, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat box. Um, so this slide will probably look to familiar to folks that joined last week's webinar, which was on um, different Gmail, G Suite um, platform features. Um, but this is specifically about Google Hangouts, which is the third um, video platform that we're going to be talking about today. And Google Hangouts um, is a video, um, a free video platform, but it also has a chat and audio call feature. Um, and I think that of all of the, the different platforms we're discussing today, Google Hangouts is the best for smaller groups of people. So Mish and Drew talked about hosting webinars like we're doing right now um, through a free conference call and through Zoom. But because um, Google Hangouts actually caps you at 10 people for each call, um, it's better for when you're doing a smaller team check-in. Um, so how you might use it is to stay connected. We actually use it every single morning um, to check in as a staff on what we're doing um, with, for, with our days as we work remotely. So if you have a group that you're working with and you're used to having in-person check-ins, um, Hangouts can be a great alternative to that. It's also useful for things like event planning and brainstorming. Again, things that you would want to do with a smaller group of people. Um, and a couple limitations are that you do need a Google account in order to use it and everyone on your call needs to also have a Google account. And like I mentioned, um, video calls are limited to 10 people. So great for smaller groups, but not so good for larger groups. And you'll want to make sure that you prep beforehand so that you're not expecting more than 10 folks to join um, your Google Hangout video call. Go to the next slide. Thank you. So I just have a couple different screenshots here that are ways that you can actually access Google Hangouts. So one way is if you go to your email, um, you'll see Hangouts is in the left hand side of your Gmail account. Um, and you can start a chat or you can click on an existing chat um, with either one person or with a whole group of people. So here we have um, our all staff chat, um, which we use quite frequently to stay in touch, um, especially right now. And you'll see there's a video icon in the upper left hand corner. So when you click on that icon, you're actually giving folks, um, everyone else in the chat a call as the same as you would be on your phone, but you're doing it um, over your computer. You can also start a Google Hangouts by um, actually creating an event within Google Calendar. You'll see um, there's going to be an option that I've circled here on the right hand um, side of your screen to add conferencing and it will automatically set up a Google Hangouts meet that every person who's a guest on the Google Hangouts, um, I'm sorry, on the calendar event will um, have access to. So those are two different ways that you can start a Google Hangouts. And then the third way is simply by going to hangouts.google.com. Um, as you can see here, I am in my Google Hangouts for work. Um, and here are folks that I've been chatting with on the left. And it gives me the option to start um, either a video call or a phone call conversation. Um, so I've gone ahead and clicked on video call. And go to the next slide. Great. So I have the option to either join or to start an existing meeting. 
And as you can see here, this is um, real time. This is captured my, my schedule for the day. I have nothing scheduled today, but if I did have a Google Hangout um, embedded in one of my, my calendar links, then it would show up there um, at the bottom. So that's an easier way for you to, another alternative way for you to join um, an existing Hangout. But I'm actually gonna click, oh yeah, sorry. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna click uh, join or start a meeting. Um, and this is a good way if you want to um, reach out to one or two people, I would say, um, relatively last minute with, without as much planning as you might want to use for a Zoom or free conference call. Um, you can either enter an existing code, um, like the one that I showed you guys earlier when we were in my calendar, or you can start a new meeting, in which case you would enter um, a new code. So on to the next slide. Thank you. So here we have um, <laughs> me waiting excitedly for someone else to join my Google Hangout call. Um, no one else is here right now, but by clicking join now, I do have the option to invite other folks. And again, this is just sort of a, a capture of what would happen if you were doing this in real time. Okay, next slide, awesome. So once you've clicked join now, you will have the option to add other people that I've circled there at the bottom. Um, and again, you're going to want to make sure that these people have a Gmail account before you add them. You can also share, sorry, yeah. Uh, you can also share the meeting information um, as you can see here, and it'll also give you the option to dial in on your phone if you're having any audio problems with your computer. We can move on. Great, so here we have Mish. I called them on my computer. Um, and there's a couple features that I wanna to quickly touch on. So again, this is a capture of what it looks like um, from, from my perspective to be having a Google Hangout conversation with just one other person. Um, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, um, there's a little plus sign next to a person icon. This would be a way to add more people. You can see there's a little microphone and a camera icon in the bottom of the screen beneath Misha's face, and that would be a way for me to mute myself or turn off my video. And then on the very left-hand side of the screen, um, you can see that there is a little um, chat icon. And this is a really handy tool that will allow you to actually drop links into the chat as you're talking. So if Misha and I were, say, video calling, or our, our whole team was video calling, and I wanted everyone to look at something that I've been writing in Google Docs, um, they could click on that little chat icon, drop the link in there, and everyone would have access to it. Um, next slide. Thank you. And then just a couple last uh, features of Google Hangouts that I thought would be helpful to highlight. So when you are in a call with someone, you have the option by going to the three dots in the bottom right-hand side of your screen um, to do a number of things. So one of the things you can do is record the meeting. This is useful if, say, you're doing a team check-in, some folks can't make it, you wanna share um, what you've been working on later, you can record the meeting. You can also change the layout. You can see here on the right that I've just um, highlighted a couple of different layout options that Google Hangouts offers, which are helpful. Um, you can also turn on captions. I've experimented a little bit with this and they are not always 100% accurate. They can be a little wonky, but this is a helpful tool if you have folks that are hard of hearing um, on your video call. And again, you can also use a phone number for audio. So if you're having difficulty with your computer audio, you can dial in with a phone. And then lastly, I just wanted to highlight at the very bottom of the screen here, next to the three dots, you'll see that there's the option to present slides. So another way for you to have a presentation um, going on while you are also in a video call. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, we are gonna take questions. Um, Rebecca, would you want to read them or do you want me to? Yeah, I'm happy to. Okay, so let's see. Um, we have a question. So 10 people is the limit on the free Zoom plan. Just clarifying that. Yes, sorry, I didn't say that. Um, yes, I think it's up to 10 people on the free Zoom plan and then um, up to 100 people with the $15 a month. And that's the, the next step up. Awesome. Um, and Brad also mentioned that there are discounts for approved nonprofits through TechSoup. I don't know if Brad, if you wanna say anything about that. Um, 
Yeah, so TechSoup is an organization that gives no, a nonprofit 501c3s discounts uh, to a variety of things like QuickBooks, etc. The Z discount for Zoom is like uh, a 20% discount. It's not a huge discount, but it comes out to be like um, $150 for a year rather than uh, closer to 200. Thank you, Brad. Um, and also borrowing a... somebody's Zoom account is, uh, works. <laughs> this is true. This is the way nonprofits get by. If you have an acquaintance with a Zoom account, be <laughs> sure to, yeah. to take them up on that. Um, so I'm here seeing from Kimberly that um, her group had their first meeting on Hangouts last week. It was pretty successful, um, but most of our folks are retired and not technologible. We had trouble just getting everyone's video and mic settings working, tried tests on both Zoom and Hangouts and had issues with both. Um, figuring out one issue is that finding privacy, microphone privacy settings and making sure that it's on, but one person still couldn't get video to work. Any basics on how to troubleshoot these kinds of setting problems? So this is a question regarding both Zoom and Hangouts. Um, Mish, do you wanna start by talking about Zoom a little bit? Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's really hard to kind of walk people through steps of setting up their camera and microphone on their own computers. That's definitely um, a big downside of video conferencing in general. Um, I, yeah, I don't really know if they're, yeah, I just think at the top of the screen when it says mute or stop video um, in those kind of arrow click down menus. Um, uh, if people like want to test or play with the like same as system or built in input or built in output um, and make sure they're not connected to any other speakers or headphones or a different microphone, that kind of thing. Um, I think that's going to be the best way of trying to help people do that. Um, do you even know of anything else, Rebecca or Drew? Yeah, that sounds right to me. Um, I know it's definitely frustrating to have to navigate these glitches, especially when it's during a meeting time. Drew, I don't know if you want to chime in. I don't know if I have anything else to add. Yeah, I was gonna say most of these platforms will have a test video and audio feature on them. I, I would recommend just trying that out and then Rebecca, I think you made a good point of saying, test these things out before you're trying to get your group together on the platform for the first time. So it might take uh, sending up some time with, with someone who's having a hard time and just trying to troubleshoot it together to figure out what they have. And I say that, and I also am the first to recognize it can be very, very frustrating to, to try to get over a technical issue with someone over the phone when you're not there uh, with them in person. For sure. Yeah. And that's a good point. Um, just to reiterate, we always do test runs before we launch a major video call session. So we're going to do a webinar, then we'll have a half hour set aside um, just to make sure that everyone has um, backup ways to get on the platform if there's, if there's sort of immediate problems. But I know that that is a little bit more time, but it does tend to make meetings run more smoothly when they're happening. Um, Kate highlighted that if your organization has a Google for nonprofits account, then you're eligible for G Suite for nonprofits at no charge and can have Google Meets with up to 100 people. That's a great point. Um, if, you, yeah, if, you do have, um, if you do have a Google for nonprofits account, then that is a, an important thing to, um, to highlight there. It'll make Google Hangouts um, give you the bandwidth to add far more people. Um, Judith asks, if you're just schmoozing with one other person, any reason Hangout is preferable to Skype or FaceTime? Yeah, that's a good question as well. I would say that um, just for schmoozing purposes, so maybe if you're just catching up with someone, um, there isn't a reason that you should use Hangouts over Skype or FaceTime. I would say the reason to use Hangouts is if you're um, on a work-related call, just because it's easy to um, you know, check back in other Google Suite things that you guys have shared, um, use the chat feature to drop Google Docs, Google Slides, and so on. Um, 
but I would say in my experience, at least Hangouts and, and FaceTime and Skype are all comparable in terms of um, video quality between just two people. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for questions. And Kate also um, emphasized that practice meetings are a fun way to get to know other folks, which is totally true. I don't know if Drew or Mishi want to chime in on this, but whenever I do webinars, it's, it's really helpful to get to know my speakers um, beforehand. On... Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of vulnerability where someone's trying out the platform the first time really helps connect with people. <laughs> totally, for sure. Um, okay, Kimberly asks, um, do you all have any personal preferences among the three platforms you talked about today? Nishan, Drew, do you want to give your two cents? Um, I would, I don't have, I, I think for a small group, uh, I would definitely lean towards Zoom or Hangouts, I think. Uh, my experience with freeconferencecall.com has been mostly with the using it as a, as a webinar platform. And it's, it's very good for that. But I think small groups, either Google Hangouts or Zoom is, is definitely the way to go. It's, it's where I would lean. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Sorry, I was muted. I think that our purpose in the webinar today is also to highlight um, why some of these platforms are better for different occasions. Um, so yeah, just to go off of that, Drew, um, I definitely agree that for a webinar, so for an event where you're expecting a lot of people, I would say free conference call is our go-to. Um, Zoom, as Mish mentioned, is something that we're a little bit newer to as an organization, but um, really useful in terms of having um, a larger conference call and hangouts I would prefer for a smaller group check-in, like an all-team meeting. Um, Judith asks, can you store the chat from a call? You guys want to talk about that? That is a good question. I think, so based on freeconferencecall.com, you can store the audio, uh, but the way to do that would be to, you would have to go in through the platform rather than just doing the call-in number. So someone would have to be on the platform and at the start of that, you can hit record and you can get just the audio from it that way. But you have to be in the, uh, you have to go in through the app to do it. Yeah. And I think Brad might know how to save chats. Do you know, Brad? Brad, you're muted if you I'm are muted. speaking. Um, <laughs> yeah, on the bottom of the chat window, I have, uh, oh, uh, so something a uh, three button a three dot menu that has uh an option save chat it also has an option for allowing participants to chat where with only the host or everyone publicly or everyone publicly and privately uh, and uh that's for regulating what sort of discussions can happen and it's important for some sort of government based meetings uh, you might want not to have allow people to have chats amongst each other, mm. um, but uh, yeah, I we I, I'm finding that Zoom works well for a lot of purposes. It has um, maybe some limit. I think all of the platforms have the same sort of limitations. Of my video doesn't work today. Uh, I, I've I think I've seen that with all of them things like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And just for Hangouts, just to reiterate, um, there is the chat feature that's built into the call, but that'll also translate back to the chat that you have outside of the call. Um, so there's not a need to, to save chat specifically from the calls. And I think that is another perk of Hangouts is that you have this ongoing chat. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that is all of our questions in the chat box. Um, but I think I can hand this back over to Mish, but if folks want to ask questions um, using the, the audio feature, we're also, we are happy to, to hear those as well. Okay. 
<laughs> so tell me about Zoom bombing. So this is Andy. Zoom bombing is when trolls or mal, mal actors of some variety are jump into an unprotected Zoom uh, meeting and either try to share their screen or start saying things or um, or just their participant video is obscene uh, and they they force you to shut the whole thing down. Um, so we've we've moved to requiring registration and a waiting room for all of our publicly announced Zoom meetings to, to minimize the chances of that. Good to know. I had never heard of that before. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the event that was that got was affected was actually a children's choir rehearsal. Mm. When you say publicly announced, tell me more what the, that means in terms of like on Facebook or something like that, or, or do you mean just an invitation to your, your group? I would say any, anything that goes on Facebook or on the website uh, in particular, but even I've heard that people just punch in a random nine digit code. So, and if it's, mm -hmm not protected and they it's there's so many zoom meetings happening that if you punch in a random nine digit meeting code um, you're likely to get into somebody's meeting well that is deeply upsetting uh, <laughs> another question for you drew uh, mm -hmm. from kimberly so she got a message from free conference call asking people to set up calls and meetings on quarter past or quarter of the hour rather than right on the hour, right on the half hour. Um, does that seem right for all of these or all of these platforms better in terms of traffic issues? I was, so I was expecting everything to kind of be hit with the same thing. Um, I've noticed it more with freeconferencecall.com. Uh, I haven't noticed it as much with Zoom. So my fiance is using, um, well, no, he's not using Zoom. He's using a, a Microsoft product, but I haven't heard as many issues with Zoom. So that does seem as far as um, overloading the system, I haven't heard as many stories, but it sounds like there's other issues if you're using an unprotected line that you do need to be, be aware of. Yeah, and for folks who aren't aware um, of what Kimberly is referencing. So if you're doing a conference call, not necessarily a video call, but just a conference call in general on freeconferencecall.com, um, because so many more people are going online right now, they've encouraged people to set up meetings um, not at normal meeting time. So not right at 2 or right at 2.30, but at 2.15 or 2.45. Um, and we have had some success in doing that. Ted, did you want to chime in on that at all? I just saw you chatted something. I'm just going to say that I heard uh, sometimes that the free conference call uh, needs to respond to the old fashioned tones. And so if you're using a cell phone and you speed dial to dot, try and dial into free conference, you might get bumped out. So sometimes if you're having trouble getting into the free conference call, you just key it in by hand and give the system time to keep up with the uh, sequence of call in numbers. Yeah. That may be an urban legend, but it's something I heard. Yeah, good tip to have. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so to folks, again, if, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask any questions, not in the, the chat function, you can feel free to do that. Um, we still have about 15 minutes left. I have a question about whether anyone has had any good luck using uh, virtual backgrounds to share information uh, using PowerPoint slides or anything else. Uh, I mean, I'll say most of my experience on here has been limited just to um, sharing a screen for a webinar. So sharing PowerPoint slides or sharing Google slides. Um, 
my other experience was with a group of friends last week we played a uh we played a game where someone had the their laptop camera pointed at the tv that we're playing off of that so haven't really tried any of the background stuff myself and gene thanks for chatting that support link sorry brucey were you going to ask something Yes, if people come up with, with um, tuto little quick tutorials on how to best show people where to find the mute and um, video privacy links on their, mm -hmm. for example, through Zoom or other platforms, it'd be great to share that because that's an issue I'm finding with some new users and it can be difficult to, I mean, I think somebody suggested a screenshot. I think that's a great idea. Um, but I don't happen to know um, how much variability there is across different, um, you know, PCs to, to Macs and also across different operating systems. So um, any guidance would be helpful. For sure. Yeah. And if we are able to compile some of those resources, we can definitely share them when we share a recording of the webinar. This is Dodi. I had a problem with, with um, Google Hangouts that it did not allow me to access the camera that I normally access with Zoom. It, it only gave me one option. It was the wrong option. Um, and I, I did a total crazy workaround with it that worked once. I signed in, I, I started a Zoom meeting and then I ended it and then I came back to Google Hangouts and then it recognized my video, but it was, it was real confusing. Um, is that any, any pointers on that? Yeah, um, was, it a, was the camera on your computer or was it, did you have more it's, than? I, I have not been able to use my internal camera Okay. Um, so I have an external one and that's Gosh. been working absolutely great with Zoom, mm. but Google Hangouts was bound and determined to use the mm. inoperative camera. I see. Yeah, no, I do not have any pointers, but I'm going to make a note of that so I can, I can get back to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, um, and Belinda has asked in the chat, is, is there a way to put up a static picture instead of video so that there isn't a lot of motion with a large meeting. I think she's talking about for Zoom. So did Brad or Mish want to answer that? Yeah, if you uh, turn off your video by clicking the, uh, on, the uh, on my screen, it's the bottom left, stop video. I'm going to click it now. And um, I just get an icon there. In my case, it's a silly looking icon. Um, but I could, I think I can go in my profile and make it uh, a picture of me or something like that. Uh, that just, just happens to be the icon for our, our an account. Um, that would pretty much accomplish it, I think. For sure. And is there a way that you can turn off video for all participants? Um, let me see. Mute all, unmute all, more. No. You one thing to know is that you will have decreased participation and attention if the the more and more people who are who are off camera so to speak right yeah that's a good point andy um i was going to say that for our for our webinars and we're expecting say over a hundred people to join we will um, automatically turn off turn off video for a free conference call um but I, I think that that's really true, especially for a smaller group call um, in Zoom. That right. I do see, I have a, as a host of Zoom, I can lock the meeting and that would prevent any uh, Zoom bombers. Hmm. Um, maybe I should do that, Where lock the meeting, but then nobody else could join it, hmm. which is, I will unlock the meeting. I did lock it, but maybe not. 
So maybe that's something you could do like after you know that everyone you're expecting has joined. Right. Where do you do that? It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, that's under um, the menu on my uh, participants, uh, manage participants w uh, window. Have you, do you see the manage participants window? Yes. yes, yes. Um, so this is a window where uh, I could quickly mute or unmute anybody because I, I think I'm the host um, or turn off a video. If, if I want to, I might be able to turn off one person's video. I'll turn off, uh, um, let me enable Ted's video. I want to see what he looks like. Ted McIntyre, start, ask to start video. Well, mm. didn't work. Um, there is another feature which is uh, oh, there's semi. Is. Hey, hey! I just turned my video on at your request. <laughs> I was I was fast asleep until that came through. <laughs> yeah. You you can also see with this manage participants who has given focus to another menu, uh, another program. So if someone's being rude and decides to go do an email and pretend to be part of the meeting. <laughs> Uh, you can actually see that, which is not good Zoom etiquette, apparently. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, it can't distinguish whether they're taking notes in a Word document or whether they are uh, watching something on Netflix surreptitiously. You're, uh, you're so right about that. Don't make any uh, broad accusations. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I have a question. Um, We've been on three different Zoom meetings in the last few days where we were going from a Google document and instead of being able to get back into the Zoom room, all of the video just stopped and all that was left was the audio and it wouldn't reconnect through the link unless everything was shut down and I restarted from get go. Why would that be? Why couldn't I get right back to the room where everyone was hmm. out of a document? I wonder, could it be that the window got lost somehow? Hmm. The window might be there. I have found that occasionally I have to go and find the Zoom icon on my taskbar. Huh. And that brings it forward if, it's, if, I, if I'm having trouble finding it. Um, ah, okay. But I don't know if that was what you experienced. No, I can try that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from folks? When's this thing going to be over? <laughs> I mean, the yeah. pandemic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brad, I think you're getting upset about the webinar. Yeah, I was like, Brad, that is not good etiquette for our <laughs> Zoom host. Um, yeah. So I have a proposal. We used to talk about BC and AC or AD. So now it's BC 19 before COVID 19 and AC 19, which is sometime off in the future after COVID 19. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's a little bleak, but we are in bleak times. Okay, folks, thank you all so much for, for joining us. I, see, I think that we've gone through all of the questions. Um, it's great to see folks' faces. Um, and if you have other questions that come up, you can absolutely reach out to any of the three of us on staff here, Drew, Misha, and I by email, or Brad. Um, I'm seeing he's raising his hand, which I, I think is him volunteering to also help people on email. No, I was, I was waving to Ted. <laughs> <laughs> or he was just waving to Ted. Um, and we also have Ted. Yeah, Ted is also a great resource on our board. Um, he is at podcast.massclimateaction.net and he has done a lot of troubleshooting for other folks on our board and he is happy to, to be a resource um, to, our, to our chapter leaders as well. How would we screen shoot this? So we are actually going to um, give out copies of the slides tomorrow and, and a recording as well. Yeah. But are you on a MacBook? Yes. Okay, so it's Shift Command 4 and then drag it 
over like the box that you want to screenshot um, just for future reference. Or okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everyone, take care of yourselves. Um, stay well, and we will be in touch shortly. You too. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks again.